Hi, everybody. Welcome back to this edition of Inside Sports. Today, we are talking college basketball, Bowie State Bulldog style, and I'm pleased to be joined by head women's coach Bernard Smith, assistant coach uh, last year, first yes. year as the head man in charge. Yes. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. So, a couple weeks on the job as the head man. Talk yes. about how the experience has been so far. Uh, it's actually been great. I think uh, from the president on down, the entire administration has been very supportive, even down to Dr. Burnham's wife. So everyone there has really gravitated to the change, and um, it's just about getting a, a good nucleus of kids on the floor because of what we lost. We lost so much. We lost uh, six good players over the last four years who had great careers there. Uh, and just trying to get the program back to the standard that they set in the past. You have a young team, and I can hear the, the raspiness in your voice, uh, you know, from, from the coaching. Uh, Talk about what it's like to step into a job with such a young team and to have to teach so much so fast. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very tiresome. Uh, there, there are long hours from film to tape to teaching. Um, being so young, Everything's repetitive. We just have to repeat everything that we do on a daily basis to help them to retain. Uh, I was up to the challenge as a teacher, um, and I, I love having a young bunch. I think when you look at the history of the game, a lot of teams that have had success started when those guys were young. You, I'm not saying we're going to be a great team like those players uh, of Georgetown or Carolina, but when Michael Jordan was 18 years old, he hit one of the biggest shots in college basketball history. Uh, and I definitely think we have some talent that could do that for us here at Boy State. When you talk about you lose such uh, a, a large amount of players uh, to graduation and such, what's it like being in Prince George's County where the pipeline of players from high school is so talent rich to replenish that those losses? Um, PG County is very rich in talent. I mean, you look at the Catholic League, you, you look at the, uh, the overall county league and the surrounding areas, there's talent. And, and by the droves, by the boatload, it's it's hard to keep it all here local, but that's my job, to get out and try to recruit um, and, and, and convince them that Bowie State is the place to be. Uh, but it's, it's going to be difficult when you have such a, a basketball uh, history of teams in this area doing well from Maryland to Georgetown to GW. Uh, you can even go up the road to your Morgan State or your Howard and Coppin State. Those teams have been very competitive and they've had team, they've had kids on those teams from this area. You said before we went on air that there is a very talent rich area though and it is you try to keep as many of the, the homegrown kids home as possible um, and you guys are the only Division II school in Maryland. Is that a benefit to you guys? It is a benefit however most of the kids in this area their dreams their college hoop dreams are Division I. So what we have to do is still recruit them and understand that their dream is to go Division I. However, the CIAA is a Division II conference with Division I talent. So I don't want to uh, sit here and underestimate the ability of a kid to play by saying, okay, let me just recruit uh, Jane Doe over here because Susan Joe is going to commit to Maryland. No, I want to go after Susan. And if Susan is able to come to Bowie, we have one of the best campuses, I think, in the area with, what, 40 miles from Annapolis, another 30, 40 miles from Baltimore, and another 30 miles from D.C. Um, I think the campus life itself is, is in a very good location for a kid to, to see some of the finer things in life and the college life has to offer from where you have to sleep. The dorms are one of the best. Uh, eat, our calf is very good um, in terms of our classes. We're building the buildings every day. Um, you look at the overall facilities compared to some of the facilities in the area, we're right there amongst the top. When you talk about the CIAA, and you just made a point, it's a Division II conference with Division I talent. Correct. Talk about the CIAA this season and um, where, you, where you guys are picked to finish and what do you think the, how the conference layout is going to be? Um, we were picked fourth, which I think is is a good assessment. Uh, they do a very good job in terms of the matchups and the talent level, especially by not having an opportunity to see them. Uh, it, it really comes down to who's healthy come February, March tournament time. Uh, I think right now being picked fourth, it's it's 
preseason. To me, the only thing that counts is postseason. So we have to work hard to keep everybody eligible and healthy between now and the end of February, start March or March Madness for the CIAA uh, tournament time. I think that every team in the conference uh, has gotten better. Uh, a lot of teams have lost a lot. Uh, you're going to still see the typical schools from North Carolina do well because they didn't lose much when you look at Smith and their roster, maybe your Winston-Salem's and, and schools of that nature. But you look at Virginia Union, Virginia State, those schools have really gotten better in terms of recruiting, whether it be this area um, or the areas where they are. And it's going to be very competitive come March. I think we're right there with the best of the best. Talk about some of your players who have impressed you uh, your first couple of weeks on the job? Uh, to be honest, I'm very impressed with our returning uh, student athletes. Uh, Courtney Baynard, Juliet Turner, uh, Shanita Jordan, uh, and Kim Jones. Uh, not to say that they did not work hard last year, they did. I think that the improvements have come with their work ethic off the court in terms of the classroom and in the weight room. And you'll see a difference once, once we begin to play. You guys have a tournament up in Pennsylvania yes. against some teams that aren't in the CIAA, yes. but in your region. Talk about how performing well against teams in your other than the CIAA in your region helps benefit you down the line. Uh, I think if we can go into this tournament and walk away with two wins, that's great come postseason time, postseason play. Uh, however, it's going to be tough. Uh, we have to play them on their floor. And uh, we really look forward to the challenge, but we're young. And being young, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to win some games that people are going to say, how did they win that game? We're probably going to lose some games that we probably will have in the bag, but there will be freshman mistakes, and it's my job just to coach them through it and try to learn and improve from it. Talk about some of the teams you're going to play in this tournament. I know, understand it's an Indiana uh, University of Pennsylvania correct. is hosting. Yes. Uh, both of those teams are very good. They've been very good for a number of years. However, they're well coached. However, it's, it's really anybody's game when you show up to play. Uh, our kids know the importance of what it's going to mean come postseason play. And what we have to do, we have to go in and take care of business early. We can't wait and let the game come to us. We have to try to come out with an aggressive approach and not allow them to set the tone and, you know, control the tempo. You guys, before you go to the tournament, have your home opener. And that's no easy task. Yeah. Johnson C. Smith coming to Bowie State. Absolutely. Uh, Johnson C. Smith's always tough, um, whether it be at their place or at ours. Um, I think they, I don't think that they lost much. Uh, and what they, what they did lose, uh, they, they gained right back. We recruited some of the same kids. Those kids chose Smith over Bowie State. They weren't from the area. However, those kids were very good players. Um, I look forward to the challenge. We'll be ready to play. I don't think we missed a beat with the players that we brought in. And I look forward to a good competitive game. We'll be young, but we'll be very competitive. Can you comment on some of the players that you brought in for this year? Uh, junior college transfer that stands out right now. Uh, Jasmine Jacobs, uh, she played at St. Paul's up in Baltimore. Uh, she's transferring in from Salt Valley Community College. Um, I like uh, Sierra Lucas, uh, Shannon... Wallace, uh, those two players played for me at the Community College of Baltimore City, uh, where we were ranked number one in team defense. I'm still uh, bringing that team defensive philosophy. We want to be number one in team defense. No one scored over 45 points over us over two years ago. It's going to be tough in the CI. But uh, Maryland Juco is a very tough conference. Barvinia down at uh, Virginia Union, she knows it was, it was tough for her to uh, compete against us when she was coaching in that conference as well. Uh, she recruited some of those very same players. Um, I think that the other two players are my freshmen. They're going to be key assets to our, to our success in the future. I, I don't know if they'll impact the league right away, but again, like I said, Michael Jordan was 18 years old when he changed the entire game. So I'm hoping that one of these freshmen will step up big come postseason play. 
Do you think your experience as a coach in the Maryland JUCO um, play, is a benefit to you when you go to recruit, especially now we're stepping out of Prince George's County and you, you, you coached at Baltimore. You yeah. can recruit Baltimore. Correct. Uh, I think it's an asset. Uh, the, the community college experience for me was a good one. Um, the competition level, again, was a good one. Uh, in order to have a perfect season, you had to beat teams four times. Your place, their place, PG for the conference, and then up at Hagerstown or Frederick for the region. And we did that. But you can't look at the CI and say, you know, we're going to dominate. That's a difference. It's, it's one thing to win, but we dominated. And UConn was a dominant force in college basketball. Do I want to dominate? Absolutely. Can I do it? Absolutely. Will I do it right away? Only time will tell. I think that it was just a stepping stone to prepare me for what's next to come. Do you have aspirations of not only winning the CIAA this year with your young team, but making the NCAAs? Absolutely. I think that um, for me, uh, that is a goal. It is an immediate goal, but throughout my career, it has been a marathon. I, I, I like to refer to it as a marathon, a marathon and not a sprint. We all want success right away. Sometimes it's out of your control due to injury or eligibility or just kids. In, in, in the women's game, it's different. Some females, um, they, they tend to have injuries a little more than in the men's game, and it's just a matter of trying to coach them through it as opposed to just with a guy just icing it and, you know, they'll, they'll move on. With our women, I have two daughters, so I'm a little more uh, sensitive to their injuries, I guess you would say, uh, and I just I hope and I can only pray that we'll stay healthy down the stretch. Yes. The last question, how do you keep your young players from you know, looking ahead and Oh, God, we won this game. Oh, we're going to win the CIAA. How do you keep them on a level field? Well, it's interesting that you say that because the kids that um, are returning, they all, as well as a lot of folk in the administration at Boy State, you know, they refer to the CIAA as Saturday night. No, it's one game at a time. It's one night at a time, not just Saturday night. There is no Saturday night if you can't take care of business on – uh, Wednesday night or opening night, whether it be Wednesday or Thursday night, you have to take care of business night in and night out. You can't look at just Saturday night. And we have to prepare for every team differently because, again, the CIAA, every team's good. Every coach is good. And for me, I like to look at it as a chess match. If they give me an opportunity to keep it close, I'll find a way to pull it out. Okay, Coach. Well, thanks for joining me here today on Inside Sports. Good luck to you this season. Thank you. Coach, Coach Bernard Smith from the Bowie State women's team. When we come back, Coach Daryl Brooks from the men's team will join me here on set. Please stay tuned.